Hey guys, welcome back to the Zephyrvonix channel. Today is the Strike History Part 2. This episode will focus on Destiny and manga side stories. If you already forgot some of the histories, take some time and rewatch Part 1 to get some revision. Before we start the video, remember to subscribe to me and hit the bell next to it. Turn on your CC sub and enjoy the video. First, let me fill in some missing information. Wyndham actually got VPS armor equipped, but only the prototype got it and the rest are without VPS armor. Secondly, the Jet Striker got a limiter on for normal pilots, so they can control it better. The limiter provided normal pilots 70% output while Nail's Windham is 100%. That's why his custom Windham is flying much faster. Second, Lightling Striker is more like a support unit. The testing result showed the developers that it's better to be a support unit than a frontline unit. Also, Lightling Striker can be a charger for allies if needed, which further proved why it's better to be a support unit. Alright, let the part 2 video start. Last episode, we learned that IWSP was complicated to use or manufacture. After the war in CE-71, Actium industry successfully manufactured IWSP. They also remanufactured Strike Gundam. The Reborn Strike got power extender and VPS armor just like other Reborn GATX units that I mentioned before. Actium Industries immediately put IWSP onto the Strike Gundam and gave it to Sivan for some testing. Before the results, let me do a detailed breakdown. Both Orb and Actium Industries manufactured IWSP, but but there are differences. The 105mm cannon's shielding and barrels are different. The railgun's barrel is shorter than Orb's version. The sensors are also different. The top thrusters on the Action version got different protective plates. The sub thrusters appeared to be indent towards the middle, and the main thruster intake fans are straight. The combined shield is smaller, but the fans on the top are bigger. It also got a handle at the top. The boomerang's blade is narrower, and the Gatling gun is longer. After the test run, Action Industries noticed a lot of problems and developed a new Strike Gundam to overcome the problems. Strike E was the solution Action Industry came up with. The E in the name stands for Enhanced. Just like the Reborn Strike Gundam, Strike E featured power extender and VPS armor, which greatly extended the operation time and had a better energy efficiency. To allow better controls for the pilot, the developers upgraded the OS and AI system. Also, the overall weight was equally divided around the structure, which provided better sportiness compared to Strike Gundam. During high-speed combats, Strike E got excellent mobility and dodging abilities. These two achievements were given by the new thrusters on the shoulders, which helped Strike E to move better in space. Not only that, all the armor on the body were lightened, which is also another key factor on why Strike E got better moves. To further enhance the mobility, movement speed, and tactical strategies, there are a total of 6 EQS-1358 rocket anchor in each hand and in the front and back of each sole. All the anchors were coated with special high molecular polymer solution. When Strike E fires the anchor, the cable will penetrate through a layer of that special solution, which means the anchor and the cable were both coated. Once the solution was applied, it will start to react and harden the cable, and the anchor head will stick on whatever object it was landed on. This solution is very flexible and able to adjust by the situation needs. All you have to do is modulating the molecular composition, then you can adjust the cable's thickness, hardness, and softness. Therefore, this anchor is basically one of the key tools on Strike E, and it's also why the arms were so expensive to make. For tactical use, this anchor can be used for direction changing by grabbing on buildings, battleships, or space wreckages. For MS battles, it can be used for armor piecing, dragging, throwing, or even capturing the enemy. During 1G environment, the anchor can lift anything under 100 tons. Even you swing it around, the cable will not snap at all. Next, the head unit. Action Industries modified the head based on Phantom Pain's request. The cooling fans were moved to the side due to the Seaweed's system upgrade. Another layer of enhanced sensors were added for better communications with allies during close combats. Other than that, the newly upgraded environmental sensors were installed, which provided better combat adaptability and enhanced searching abilities during any environments. Lastly, to ensure the pilot will survive during any dangerous situations, it was equipped with Safety Shuttle, which further protected the cockpit. For the weapons, 12.5mm automatic Seaweeds, 57mm high energy beam rifle from Jew or Strike Gundam, and a pair of M8 FSB1 Shorty beam rifle. The Shorty beam rifle is smaller than a standard rifle and the shooting range is decreased by 15%, but they are as powerful as a standard rifle and able to destroy the enemy in one shot. 
Action Industries made at least three Strike E for Phantom Pain. All of them were assigned to Phantom Pain members, including Suvun Kalabaya, Emilio Bodrick, and Dana Snip. Another Strike E was piloted by Lucas O'Donnell, which is a coordinator who works for Fujiyama Company, and this Strike E was assumed to be assigned by Earth Alliance. Strike E also inherited the biggest feature on Strike Gundam, the ability to use Striker Packs. Strike E can use four different backpacks, including IWSP and another trial backpacks. Strike E IWSP was used by two pilots at the moment, Suvin and Lucas. The one different thing on IWSP compared to the trial backpacks is that the colors won't change. When Strike E is equipped with IWSP, the VPS armor will change back to normal dark blue and white scheme. That's because when IWSP was developed, VPS armor is not a common thing yet, so the developers didn't program a specific color scheme for it. Suvin used the IWSP on Strike E once. When Phantom Pain was attacking the Martians, the Noah Striker was damaged by Delta Astray. Suvin had no choice, so he tricked the pilot of Slaughter Dagger IWSP to crash into the ocean. Then he stole the IWSP and equipped on his Strike E. He fought the Delta Astray again and Suvin took the victory. Another Strike E IWSP was used by Lucas. He was sent with Zixt Elwes and his Siku to Republic of East Asia Forest Preserve No. 13 to assist the EA force there. The Strike E IWSP first appeared when Zixt was out of control as he was battling against Su. Let me do a quick background run on Zixt. Whenever Zixt is using his Siku, his second character comes out and turns into a minus killing machine. If he wants to stop in time, then he will keep attacking both enemies and allies. This is also why he dislikes and refuses to use his Siku unless he is desperate. Back to the story, Lucas arrived just in time and snapped Zixt out of his trance-like state. Then together, they defeated Su and his Kerberos Saku warrior. Su was retreated too. Later, when Lucas, Zixt, and Socius head towards the meeting place for a peace talk with Zav and the gorillas. Su appeared again and attacked them, but Lucas deliberately told Su, Rago Gundam is in EA space and Su left. After Su hijacked the Speculum Rigo, the base turned into a mess and Lucas and Zixt was returned. Lucas hijacked another Rigo and dumped his Strike E IWSP. The first and another trial striker is Noah Striker. This striker is developed based on Zuvin's usage of IWSP pack and its data. So Noah Striker is considered as the successor of IWSP. Just like Strike E itself, Noah Striker was developed as part of the Action project. Combined all the new and old data, Noah Striker was developed to handle all range battles. Battles, but further specialized the close combat abilities. Since this striker was focused more on close combat, so it had to work as a team to maximize its performance. Which was why Strike Noah will often launch with Blue Jew and Verde Buster. Noah striker have its own VPS pattern when it is equipped on Strike E. Strike Noah will turn into black and gray scheme. Noah striker also provided the ability to fly in space and atmosphere easily. During flight mode, the wings will rotate and spread out. Not only the flight abilities, Noah striker Striker also features different weapons to enhance battle performance. First, a pair of MRQ-10, Fagric 3, beam blade are stored in the wings. It's a physical sword with beam blades, capable of dealing physical and beam damage. Although it's not as large as an anti-ship sword, but it's capable of dealing massive damage to the target and even damaging VPS armor. Another pair of maum 3 e 42 twin linear gun are on the wings. They can swivel in various directions for a wide range of fire. They are specifically designed for close combat, which is why they can fire rapidly without consuming too much energy. Also, a single EQS-1358 T rocket anchor is on the Noah Striker. Strike Noah first deployed with Blue Jew and Verde Buster to defend against Patrick Sala Loyalist Gorillas, which the three Gundams cooperated perfectly and completed the mission. Very soon, Sylvan landed a squad of slaughter daggers and destroyed a coordinator refugee camp. Later, Phantom Pain was assigned to protect the destroyed Gundam during its delivery. Strike Noah shot down a few Saku warrior and witnessed the death of Moody Holocofto. Then he proceeds to destroy all three Kerberos Baku hound to revenge her. The last mission was attacking the DSSD space station. Suvan was trying to capture the AI unit on Stargazer Gundam, but his Strike Noah was kept damaging by it. Celine later grabbed the Strike Noah and allowed DSSD to use propulsion laser to launch both MS away from the battlefield. When both of them awaked, they were at Venus. Celine rescued Zuvin and took all the remaining energy from Strike Noah. The heavily damaged Strike Noah was abandoned and both of them traveled back to Earth with the Stargazer. 
The second pack of Strike E is called Another Trial Soul Strike E, which is a close combat use striker. It's also a slightly upgraded Soul Striker. When this striker was equipped, Strike E's color will turn into a pale blue and white color scheme. The shoulder unit of the original Soul Striker was removed due to the shoulder thrusters. To further improve the close combat abilities, each forearm is equipped with a single Panzer Eisen Rocket Anchor and Midas Messer Beam Boomerang on top of it. Also, the Swag Gawea 15.78 meter anti ship sword was cap. Other than those weapons, all the Strike E's standard weapons were able to use as well, which created various tactics to maximize Soul Strike E's performance. Soul Strike E is also used by Lucas at one point. During their trip to the assisting mission, Lucas used the Soul Strike E and teamed up with Zix Siku. They managed to destroy two Saku Warriors and a command Saku CCI that were patrolling in the forest. The last pack of Strike E is called Another Trial Launcher Strike E, which is a slightly upgraded version of Launcher Striker. When it was equipped onto the Strike E, the color scheme will change into dark green. The weapons on the striker were remained untouched, except the combo weapon port was no longer on the shoulders but over the shoulders. Compared to the original launcher striker, the shots were more powerful and able to use Acne 320mm Hyper Impulse Cannon more times. Thanks to VPS armor and power extender, the operation time and power efficiency were greatly increased. Also, just like Soul Strike E, Launcher Strike E can use the standard Strike E's weapons to maximize its tactics and performance. After Emilio and Dada was defeated, they were captured by Jess Rebel and his friends. Emilio and Dada subsequently led them into a secret research lab and stole two Strike E's. One of them was equipped with Soul Striker and the other was equipped with Launcher Striker. During their escape battle, Emilio changed his heart and attacked Dada. Also destroyed his Launcher Strike E, saving Jess and his friends. In CE-71, Orb obtained Strike Gundam's data and PS Armor's secret. Then based on the information, Morganet made the Strike Rouge. At the same time, Orb was planning to develop their own flagship MS secretly. The result is Agatsuki. Agatsuki was assumed to be developed along with or nearly at the same time with Strike Rouge. Rumors said that Agatsuki was finished when Archangel escaped from Joshua to Orb. But why it was never deployed? By the time Agatsuki was finished, the developers ran into several technical difficulties, such as incomplete OS, weapon and backpack system development difficulties. That's why Kagali used Strike Rouge instead of Agatsuki. For the frame and concept, Agatsuki is very similar to Strike Gundam, even its frame was developed based on the X100 frame. To further improve the base mobility, multiple thrusters were added on the shoulders and legs. The communication system was also greatly improved, ensure it could communicate with allies units under the effects of Neutron Jammer. The most iconic feature on Akatsuki is Yatano Kagami Anti-Beam Defensive Reflection System. The gold on the body is a defensive system, but also a special color scheme that can only be used by royal families in Orb Nation. According to the settings, this defensive system is very expensive. One set of armor is enough to produce more than 20 and one Astray. This is why there is only one Akatsuki, and that's why Orb cancelled the mass production plan after such expensive cost. Yatano Kagami is a mirror surface armor composed of nanoscale beam diffraction lattice layers and ultra-fine critical plasma suppression layers. No matter how large or powerful your beam shot is, there's no way you can penetrate the armor. After the armor absorbed the beam attack, it will track the enemy using Akatsuki sensors and redirect the beam towards them. In the settings, Yatano Kagami can reflect or defend against Positron Blaster Cannon or shots from Genesis. However, speaking of defend or reflect Genesis shots, only the gold parts will be perfectly fine. The joints and other materials that aren't part of Yatano Kagami will be damaged or destroyed. Not only offense and defense, Yatano Kagami also have the ability to bend or penetrate specific beam shields or reflectors. However, it got some very obvious weaknesses. The armor cannot defend against beam strikes like slashes from beam saber or beam boomerang. Also, the defensive ability against strong physical attacks were pathetic too. For the base armaments, a pair of M2 M5D 12.5mm seaweeds on the head Type 72 D5 Hyakulai Beam Rival. This rifle is very similar to the beam rival on Strike Gundam, but added one extra ability. It got a spot under the barrel to put a beam saber, turning it into a gun sword. A single Type 73 J2 experimental twin beam saber on the left side skirt. 
It can split into two individual beam sabers or be a part of the gun sword. And a Type 71 experimental defensive shield, which is capable of reflect or defend beam attacks, also got better physical attack defense than the body. Just like Strike Gundam, Akatsuki was equipped with Striker Pack system, but because Akatsuki got a different shoulder design, so it cannot use Strike Gundam Striker Packs. But Orb specifically developed two Striker Packs for Akatsuki, which is Owashi and Shinanui. Owashi is a Striker Pack for atmospheric use. There are four jet engines and two rocket boosters, which allow Akatsuki to fly freely in the atmosphere and fly at subsonic speeds. Just like Phantom Double O on Justice Gundam and Utori Striker, Owashi Striker can detach from the MS and fight as a separate unit. It will be remote controlled by the pilot or controlled by AI system to ensure its mobility and agility. Only a pair of Type 73 F Kai high energy beam cannon was equipped on the Striker. They are the most powerful ranged weapon on Uwashi Agatsuki. When in use, they will position under the shoulders and fire. There's a handle in it, but even Agatsuki don't use it. The cannons can still fire. Shinanui is a striker pack for space use. There are four thrusters to boost the mobility and speed during space battles. There are seven M five three one R guided mobile beam turn system. The OS of it is very similar to the first generation Dragon system from Zaft, but it wasn't sure what's the exact OS because it's based on the first generation Dragon system, so only pilots with high spatial awareness could control it. Each beam turret have three muscles. Combine all seven of them, and you'll see twenty one muscles. All twenty one of them can create a strong barrage or generate a huge barrier to protect allies MS or fit two battleships into the barrier. Due to the expensive cost and development difficulties, one prototype was made and the project was frozen after the body was completed. Under Uzumi Nana Asaha's orders, Akatsuki will only be used as the last line of defense or when Orb is in national calamity, which is why Uzumi hoped Kagali will never know the existence of Akatsuki and the hangar door will be forever shut. Due to the development was extremely secret, which is why only a few people know about it. Also, because Akatsuki is a secret, so that's why is identified as unknown during its first launch. Kagali used Agatsuki to defend against SAF forces. She did manage to shoot down a few MS, but Shin arrived with his Destiny Gundam very soon. He destroyed Agatsuki's shield and left arm. Right before he was about to end Kagali, Kira came from the sky and saved Kagali. Before our angel went to space, Agatsuki was handed to Mu La Fulaga. In the final battle, the Shinanui Agatsuki was used by Mu perfectly and shot down a lot of MS. Mu protected the Art Angel and in Eternal. Working along with Infinite Justice Gundam, Mu and Afran destroyed Requiem, ending the CE-73 war. Strike Gundam is one of the best designs in the CE timeline. Most of the powerful factions were using it as the base to develop their own variations. Librarians is one of the factions who use Strike Gundam as the base to develop their own strike variants. The result is Gale Strike Gundam. Instead of Versatile, Gale Strike was designed based on the pilot's characteristics and specifically designed for high-speed close combat. The shoulders were mounted with improved propulsion system used by Aero Striker, which greatly improved the mobility, as well as forward or side-to-side -side movements. Since all the thrusters on the Gale Strike is high output and able to perform moves that normal MS cannot perform, combining with its irregular high-speed attack style, that's why it's called Gale, meaning a strong wind force sweeping the battlefield. Gale Strike's weight and height were slightly increased due to the revised drive system in the leg joints. The revised drive system provided faster response time but if overused, it's very easy to overheat and reduce the durability. To solve this problem, another new knee armor with slits were equipped on the legs. They are the cooling units with different ways to cool down the joints in different environments. On Earth, the slits will draw air in to achieve air cooling. In space, they will function as heat radiators. The sensors and computers in the head were also upgraded which increased the size. So the original strike gas cooling slits were removed. Another miniaturized Peltier cooling device was equipped in the head and used for heat dissipation. This result, Gale Strike doesn't have a mouth. For the base armaments, 75mm seaweeds on the head, 57mm high energy beam rival, and armor Schneider combat knife in the holsters on the elbows. Just like Strike Gundam and the rest of the Librarian's MS, Gale Strike have the ability to use Striker Pack. The unique Striker on Gale Strike is called Shield Striker. This pack was directly modified from L Striker. The wings and large thrusters were removed. Only the small thrusters and the battery pack was kept. 
at the top of the striker, a shield was equipped and the beam sabers were now relocated around the clavic coal. The shield on the back is mainly used for defending attacks from the back. Also allow Gale Strike to wield its weapons with both hands. A pair of wing sword is on the hip. They are very similar to Astray Mirage Frame's katana. As Gale Strike is battling its enemy with the swords, the swords will start to collect data. If it detects that the object is too strong, it will alter the vibration and increase the cutting power. It's possible to cut through PS armor with enough power and vibration. The wing swords can also use along with the shield as aerial and flight control. When stored on the hips, it served as support wings. When held in hand, they can use for aimback controls. Those features are why Gale Strike is able to attack with irregular high speed or fly in any environment. The first mission of Gale Strike was deployed along with replica Astray Red Frame. When Gale Strike was fighting with Lord Gui and his Astray Red Frame, Guy Mulakumo came with his Astray Blue Frame second revise, and Andy He was forced to retreat. Later, under the order from Supreme Librarian, Gale Strike was launched to assist Astray Mirage Frame second issue. During their journey to fight Guy, Gina figured out that Andy He is the carbon human clone of Guy. Since Gina still have the memory of killed by Guy in his previous life, he immediately immediately starts to attack Andy He. However, Canard and Guy arrive which interrupted the battle. Gina went after Guy and Andy He was fighting against Canard. Gale Strike did land several blows on Dreadnought H, but since the latter is powered by a nuclear engine, Canard easily brushed away the attacks. Andy He was soon surrendered as he noticed that he can't win against either Canard or Guy. Later, he led Guy, Canard and Law to the Librarian space. What happened after for Andy He and Gale Strike was unknown. The final variant of the entire strike line is Rigel Gundam. Ironically, this variant is not developed by either EA or Zaft. Rigel Gundam was developed by Fujiyama Company in Republic of East Asia. Before the whole history and settings, allow me to briefly introduce Fujiyama Company. Fujiyama Company is a private company and its main client is Earth Alliance. The company is responsible for sensors and missiles. They also developed Cosmo Graspa. However, MS development is always their weakness. This situation was changed as Fujiyama Company successfully hired technicians that fled from Orb during the CE-71 war. After CE-71 war, EA contacted powerful and professional companies to work on the next generation Gundams. Action Industries and Fujiyama Company was included. Action Industries is responsible for GATX series upgrades, and Fujiyama Company is responsible for new generation striker packs. When Action Industries finished the development of Strike E and its backpacks, they gave a hand to Fujiyama Company. Action Industries speeded up the new generation striker packs development, and they provided Strike E's data. Based on the data, Rigel Gundam was born, the first MS created by Fujiyama Company itself, in order to show the world that they have professional technologies and gain more reputations. Fujiyama Company decided to put Rigel Gundam into the battlefield of East Asia straight away. As the final product of the X100 line, Rigel Gundam's weapons and features were very similar to Strike Gundam. Also, just like Strike E, it can use another trial strikers and featured VPS armor. The 57mm high energy beam rifle and shield were shared with Strike Gundam. A pair of M2 M5 12.5mm automatic series. Small shields on the forearms and armor Schneider combat knife in the small shields. Just like Strike Gundam, Rigel Gundam have the ability to use Striker Packs too. Its Striker Packs were completely based on the first three Striker Packs on Strike Gundam. The improved Striker Packs on Rigel are called Speculum, Caliburn, and Sun Bullet. These Striker Packs were all named after the three sacred treasures of Imperial Regalia of Japan, which are Yatano Kagami, Ame no Murakumo no Suruki, and Yasakani no Magatama. First, let us start with Speculum Striker. This striker was using L Striker's data to develop. So you can say this is the L Striker, but maximize the performance. Different than L Striker, Speculum Striker have the ability to fly in space or atmosphere freely, as well as having higher outputs to increase the mobility and speed. For the armaments, just like L Striker, Speculum Striker got two beam sabers on the top. Since the thruster outputs were increased, so the developers added an unknown number of hard points on the wings, which means Speculum Rigel can equip different weapons on the wings, just like Jet Windham while keeping its outstanding mobility. Speculum Rigel was first piloted by Guy when he was using it for a test flight. Both Guy and Law were very impressed about its excellent flight ability. Later, one of the Speculum Rigel was hijacked by Zoo thanks to Lucas 
Ultimus leaked the information. Guy came with his Astro Blue Rain Fort and attempted to stop Su. But Su cornered both Guy and Elijah. When Su used the missile pods on Speculum Rigo, he managed to use the window and ran away. Even Guy and Elijah followed him into the forest, but they still failed to capture Speculum Rigo. Very soon, Lucas stole another Rigo and loaded all the equipment into a transport plane, which also teamed up with Su and Zex to create the fourth army. After Lucas got away, he used the Speculum Rigo and took over a Zaft base. During the attack, he also defeated Rudolph's Goof Igniter. Next, Caliburn Striker, which is the second striker pack of Rigo Gundam. This striker was developed from Soul Striker's data. To further upgrade its close combat abilities, Fujiyama Company added a lot of weapons and improved the original weapons on Soul Striker. On the left forearm, a single Panzer Eisenkai rocket anchor was equipped. It got bigger claws and able to capture or crush the enemy better. On the right forearm, a single Midas Messer Kai beam boomerang can be spotted. It became more powerful and the size was increased, which provided a bigger attack radius. On the back, a single Sue Gawea Kai anti-ship sword and Kalabog large beam saber was equipped. Both weapons got top tier cutting power and able to deal physical and beam attacks at the same time. Caliburn Rigo was first tested by Lucas. Lucas was very impressed about its abilities and awakened his desire to fight, which was part of the reason why he betrayed Fujiyama Company and created the 4th Army. In the last battle, Lucas was fighting against Guy and his Astro Blue Frame Third. Guy defeated his Caliburn Rigo. Lucas was killed and Caliburn Rigo was damaged beyond repair. The last striker pack on Rigo is called Sun Bullet Striker. This striker was developed based on Launcher Striker's data and mainly used for long-range attack missions. In order to maximize the firepower, the developers studied the weapons on Launcher Striker, Buster Gundam, and Calamity Gundam to get the best answers. On the left side of the backpack, it got Abney Kai Hyper Impulse Beam Cannon. This weapon was directly upgraded from the one on Launcher Striker. So far, all we know is that the firepower was further increased. On the right side of the backpack, it was equipped with Toast Block Kai Plasma Support Cannon, which is an upgraded version of the one on Calamity Gundam. On the backpack, a single 8 tube missile launcher was equipped to replace combo weapon pod. Combine all the weapons on the striker, it will create a strong barrage formed by beam, physical rounds and missiles. Which was why this striker is a perfect choice for attacking base, sweeping an entire MS team or suppressing enemy's forces in a short time. Some bullet rigor was used by Lucas when he was monitoring the battle between Su and Trojan from far away. However, Law sneaked up behind Lucas and sliced off one of the cannon's barrel on some bullet rigor. Zex used himself as a shield and let Lucas escape. Lucas later switched to Caliburn Striker and heading towards Guy. Thanks for watching Strike Gundam Episode 2. What do you think of Destiny and side stories variants. Share your thoughts in the comment section. I would love to hear more from you guys. Like this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell next to it so you can get the notifications ASAP. Also, you can comment a request for a specific episode if you would like to. Follow my IG at Sephavonix. Donation link is in the description and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.